Good morning, and welcome to Tea Time with Tanya. I'm Tanya. How you doing today? Today is Monday, the 16th. Guys, it is the 16th of January, 2023, already. The month of January is already halfway over. All right, let's start today off with a blessing. Dear universe, dear creator, dear spirit guides, please give us the collective. There it is. Oh. Oh. Huh. We get the blessing of faith. The universe is testing you. Will you be faithful and true to yourself? Be courageous. For you are supported by a divine ocean of love. You are gifted at this time with the blessing of a strong faith that will see you through the present challenges. Namaste. Let me read this one more time in case you were not paying attention. The blessing of faith. And this is faith with the small f, guys. The universe is testing you. Will you be faithful and true to yourself? Be courageous, for you are supported by a divine ocean of love. You are gifted at this time with the blessing of strong faith that will see you through the present challenges. Namaste. Good morning, good morning, and happy Monday, everyone. Oh, my goodness. I don't have a whole lot of questions, guys, so I'm going to need y'all to throw some at me for Wednesday's show and for Friday's show. So this is not going to be a long session today. Only got about five questions. My first question is from Beautiful Girl. Beautiful Girl would like to know, what happened at JFK Airport on Friday night? Two planes nearly coll uh, collided on the runway. What happened to where this could that? What happened that this uh, this major accident almost happened? Oh, hold on. Card upside down. Universe, Creator, Spirit, Guides, please, Taros, speak clearly. What happened? at JFK Airport on Friday night where two planes nearly collided on the runway. Ah, first thing is this, this is going straight back to the uh, uh, air traffic controllers. Air traffic controllers, guys, this was, and this is going to be uncovered in the investigation. Not enough people. This is a failure of the FCC. Um, Short-staffed. Uh, skeleton crews and this is what happened you had two planes at basically what happened was there were not enough staff to watch a monitor the air the air traffic one person gets called away and another person steps in to take over and this could have been something as 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 mundane as somebody having to go to the bathroom real quick and somebody else stepping in to, to monitor and not uh there there was no communication in the uh in the interim this was complete human error but this is human error that could have been completely waylaid had had there been enough staff this is a direct result of understaffing skeleton crews not having enough people to do the job forcing people to do multiple jobs at one time and this one almost resulted in the death of over 150 people and that's just on one plane this is a failure of the FCC this is a direct effect of not having enough staff unwillingness to pay people a working wage unwillingness to give people hours that that would work hire enough people to work the hours that you need them to work they'll be fresh 
give them the breaks that they need to go to the bathroom and rehydrate and you wouldn't have these problems. This is a direct result of the FCC's failures on keeping people, giving, treating employees correctly, not, not forcing two or three employees to do the job of six. And this is exactly what it is, guys. Two or three employees. And I want to say it was only like two. And one, there was, there was three scheduled. But this is like a six-man job. This is like a six-person job. And there were only three. But at the time that this happened, there was only two. Because one of them was somewhere else. This is human error, and this is the error on the part of the FCC for not, not ensuring that there are enough staff to do these important jobs. This is overbearing work put, placed on the shoulders of a skeleton crew, and then people having uh, emergencies, just having to go to the toilet. And this is, and I, guys, I kind of feel like this is exactly what it was, that one of them had to go to the toilet. The other one was to monitor their, uh, their, um, their flight paths. And poof, walla, bingo. Lack of communication. Not enough people's eyes on the screens. And there was almost a horrible, horrible collision. But it did not happen. But that's what it was because of, beautiful girl. That's what it was because of. My next question is from Danielle. The government is making homelessness a crime. Encampments are being torn down. People's tents, vehicles, people's lives are being thrown away. California has been notorious for this, but this is happening all over the United States. Their governments are making homelessness a crime, but they are the the same governments that are making homelessness a crime are not doing anything to help with homelessness, and this is where I need everybody to understand exactly what is going on. Again, we had slavery on our ballots this last year. It passed in one state. You want to know? What's going to happen when they fully criminalize homelessness? I have been saying this. The private prison industry is gonna go, uh, it's gonna go under. That's why some states are dragging their feet on uh, legalizing marijuana. Why? Because most of the criminals, most of the people that are filling their uh, jail cells are low level marijuana convictions. Private prison is slave labor. Private prison is a way for rich people to make money off of black and brown bodies for petty and uh, for petty crimes. Petty crimes that most that most white people, if they went to jail at all, would normally serve probation, OR probation, or at just have to pay a fine. But because this is big business, and understand what they do with these prisons, guys. Understand what they have these inmates doing. These inmates are making all kinds of products. These inmates could be the ones that are uh, booking your, uh, your trip. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All of these big businesses contract through prisons. So that person at Expedia or whatever that you're talking to, could very well be an incarcerated person who is in prison, who is getting paid five cents an hour to take your reservations. Okay? Private prison is big business. Big business. Uh, when they don't have enough uh, um, uh, uh, migrant and seasonal farm workers to go pick your, uh, to go pick this or that, prison crews will be out there doing it. When they don't have road crews out there fixing the roads, prison crews are out there doing it. Because you got to pay a road crew, oh, those guys are making somewhere above $45 an hour. But you only got to pay an inmate a nickel. And then you're going to tax him on that nickel. It's slavery. It is slavery. So, uh, Danielle, what the government is doing, making homelessness a crime. 
tearing up their livelihood. The only thing that they have left, throwing it in the back of a doggone trash truck, like their lives don't mean anything. Some of these people who are living on the street are working two and three jobs, doing everything they can to survive. And I need everybody to take one second right now and just think about the hundreds of thousands of homeless people that ain't nobody talking about in California. Where are all these people? All these people were living on the street. Those streets are flooded out. Where are all the people? Ain't nobody talking about what's going on with the homeless people. What happened to our homeless? Where did they go? California's underwater has been for two weeks. Where are our homeless people? Why is nobody talking about where they're at? Where were they moved? Were they moved? Where did they go? Okay, don't have short-term memory. And don't let situation forget, let, allow you to forget about our other fellow men. California is underwater. Hundreds of thousands of people are out of, are unhoused. Where are these people? Where are they? And if there was a place to put them because of a flood, why weren't they put there before the flood? These are the questions we have to ask each other. These are the questions that we need to demand that we ask from the, from the government. We are only as strong as the weakest of us. And if we keep trying to get rid of portions of our society, that makes us monsters. And that makes us weak. All right? My next question from Danielle is, how is the royal family feeling now that Harry's book, The Spare, has come out? Um, I think the only one that's been talking anything has been Camilla. And that's because she is finally, she's the queen. She is the red queen, guys. She is the red queen. She finally got all the power that she has been fantasizing about her whole life. She has gone to bed dreaming about being the queen since she was 19 years old. Since since her and old Chucky started bumping uglies. Oh yeah, she has been dreaming of the day that she would be queen. And now she is queen. And she thought people was going to love her. But no, she messy. She's messy. Um, so how is the royal f family feeling about uh, Harry's book? Um, they're they're kind of swallowing hard because there's so many little golden nuggets of family secrets that uh, that Harry's about to air. Er Harry is airing the, the family laundry. And... Um, a lot of people are not appreciative of that. But this is this book is going to help Harry. Harry didn't write this book for anybody else but for himself and his wife. He needed money, he needed closure. And this is what this book is for Harry. This is closure. This is him putting his heart on paper. This is him putting all of his feelings about what happened to his mother, the inter- uh, relationships between his father and his brother how hard their lives were how miserable rich folks can be how trifling and confused these folks are so how is the royal family feeling after Harry's books come out Tarot please tell us how is Harry feeling oh They're mad that he's making money off of it. They're um, they're calling him a traitor that he's spilling uh, the family secrets. They're angry. They're angry. They're angry because he's illuminating what it is to be a Montbatten. How confusing and trifling it is in that family. How petty people can be how they are don't behave as a family, how they are so very, very formal to each other. There's no cuddles. There's no loves. No, that came from nannies, au pairs, and stuff like that. Everything is about duty. Everything is about 
how you present yourself to the world. Everything is about protecting the image. Everything is about protecting the image. And what Harry did was shatter that. He showed, he turned the mirror around and then dropped it. He shattered or he is shattering the persona of the royals to bring them into the to the knowledge of everybody to show that they are trifling mean spirited and have all kinds of drama just like everybody else's family that's got money and that's, that are that can't be controlled and this is what's going on Harry's book The Spare illuminated all the problems not all the problems but illuminated a lot of the big problems the interpersonal problems between Charles and his sons it's also illuminating uh, the relationship that the boys had with their mother before she passed and the, 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 uh, the relationship that the boys have with each other and how hard it is to be born into duty not to be not to not to be born to to be able to live your life for yourself but to be born into a station where all your decisions are made for you where your life plan is laid out in front of you to where you cannot do this or that because it may mar your image where you can't be a normal kid because it may have lasting repercussions on your person your uh your um not your personality, on your, oh goodness, your reputation, where you have to be careful about everything, even about who you like, and especially about who you fall in love with. That curse hit Charles. He couldn't marry Camilla when he wanted to marry her, even though she was married. I mean, they were having an affair. I mean, yeah, come on. But either way, they are controlled all the way down to their genitalia. Harry broke free, but Harry is paying the ultimate price. But Harry is also protected because his mama is right there with him and his mama ain't gonna let nothing happen to them. And yeah, they are in danger every day. Harry and Meghan are in danger every day. They have a host, a legion of angels protecting them. They really do. They really do. And the head one is Diana that is protecting them. All right. Guys, if you watched Friday's show, you saw the alarm go off. You saw the flame behind me as high as it could get without burning my tapestry down. That was Lisa Marie Presley. She was here. She I don't know why she didn't decide to speak on Friday, she just wanted to make noise, I don't know, but that was her, and I am going to give her the opportunity to say whatever it is that she would like to say. Lisa Marie, I am giving you the opportunity now, please, if you would like to speak, please say whatever it is you would like to say. The floor is completely yours. She wasn't ready. This was sudden. She was not ready. She had plans. She did not want to go. She, it was so sudden. It was sudden. And when she felt like she was falling down a pit, she's angry. She is so mad. She did not know. This is not how she wanted it to be. She had plans. She was supposed, she had plans for next week. She had planned something that she had been waiting for, that she had been putting off, that she had wanted to do. She had finally made the plans, made the reservations. She had the plane tickets. She was finally excited about this. And now it, it was taken. And she says, and when she, and when she was at the end, there was nobody there. 
It's like she she was expecting her father to be there. She was expecting her son to be there. But she was so mad and there was nobody. It was just darkness. She was so angry. She just wanted to shout and shout and shout. But she's she's okay now. She's starting to understand. And she has reconnected now. But it was nothing like she like she expected it to be. It was nothing. Her 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 death was nothing like she thought it was going to be. She was she was lonely. And she was afraid because she didn't understand. And it happened so quick. It's like somebody hit her in the back of the head and the lights just went out. And she couldn't breathe. She felt like she was just suffocating. And all of a sudden, she was thrust into this where she was free falling. But she's okay now. She's accepted that she's gone. But she was very, very angry because she didn't want to go. She wasn't ready. She was not ready. She thought that she had more time. She thought that she was going to be able to do all of the things that she had planned to do. But she's accepted it. She has accepted it. But she's still unhappy about it. Okay? All right. It's raining. <laughs> All right. Uh, my next question is from Snoop Doggy Dog. And this is about George Santos. George Santos, the poster child of the GOP. What happens when you allow lies, misinformation, gaslighting to become a person? It manifested into George Santos. That is the culmination of everything that the GOP is. Liars, deceitful, will stand in your face and lie to you with a smile looking you in your eyes, spitting talking points. He is the culmination of all these years of deception and lies and treachery rolled up into one person. The question Snoop Doggy Dog has, first question, was George Santos born in the United States? Is George Santos a United States citizen? Tara, please tell us, is George Santos a, a born citizen of the United States? Not naturalized, was he born in the USA? Is he an American citizen by birth? I think we got the second question though. Second part of the question. Guys, four cards I got no yes. Four cards I got no yes. The closest thing I got to a yes is the Knight of Cups. And this is approach, arrival, arrival. I want to say old George Santos came to this country. We already know that his parents were not uh, were not citizens. I mean, come on. He, he wants to say his grandparents were in, were in Auschwitz. So, I mean, that's, that's a whole lot of traveling for, for one family in, in a short amount of time to go from Auschwitz to wherever to wherever to wherever. But his parents were not American citizens either. So, George Santos came here from somewhere else. Let me go ahead and pull the rest of these. Ah, we got the hermit, the treason card. We got the knight of wands moving. And the last card, we got the three of swords, heartbreak. Okay, and this is what Tarot is telling me. George Santos came to this country with his parents as undocumented aliens. Yes, they did. Him, his mother, and his father, the three of them, they were running from 
whatever country they came from, they were running from violence, tyranny, treachery there. They moved to this country. They immigrated to America. He is not a born United States citizen. Um, his family got here out of heartache and trauma. So they were escaping some type of political wherever from wherever they came for. I want to kind of say he's Cuban. I want to say he's Cuban, but I don't think he is. He might he might be. He's he's Hispanic of some 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 uh persuasion. Uh But the first card, the 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 first card that came out was the emperor. And the second question was who financed old George Santos? Guys, I want to say his financing his financing came out of Russia. His financing, I'm not going to say it came from Vlad because it could have come from an oligarch. It could have come from any low level whoever that wants to put him where he where they want to put him. This was another insertion surgically just like old Donnie boy. Remember, old Donnie boy wants you to believe that he financed his whole campaign himself. No, that was Vlad. That was Vlad that financed old Donnie Boy's campaign. MBS might have had something to do with it too. But I don't think he did with the last one. It was Vlad. And old George Santos, all on Team 45. Yeah, his financing has come out of, out of Russia as well. It'll come out. It will come out. Don't worry. Again, don't worry about George Santos. All the nastiness that he did is, is going to be for naught. He's going to get everything he deserves. He's going to get perp walked right out of Congress. He ain't going to resign. He ain't going to resign. Let him be humiliated as they throw him out. Because that's, that's what has to be done. All right? There you go, Snoop Doggy Dog. Okay, the next thing... I'm going to talk about, but well, before that, guys, if you enjoy this content, give me a thumbs up, okay? And if you like it here, subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you'll never miss an upload, all right? I love you guys, and I want you to be here with me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right, so hit that bell notification and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, all right, just so that this video can be seen. And that's what the thumbs up do. If no, if 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 nobody understands what why why we ask for thumbs up, if nobody likes the video, nobody sees the video, guys. So please, if you enjoy this content, please give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. That way, it can be. Um, it has a better chance of being visual on the YouTube algorithm, okay? All right. And also, um, time is coming, guys. Uh, tax season, we're after Christmas. Everybody's trying to get their finances back in order. If you need, uh, get your protection sachets, get your money draw sachets, get your sachets to bring you luck, okay? $15, and that includes shipping and handling. And I also have um, availabilities for readings, guys. So if you would like a personal private reading, $25 is all it's going to set you back for you to get some peace of mind about whatever it is that is on your mind. You spend that much on a cup of coffee and a, and a, and a, and a, and, and lunch. Spend that money and get some some um, answers for yourself. All right. Invest in you. This is what I'm asking you to do right now. Invest in yourself. Get those answers that you need answers to. And you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for it, guys. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. All right. My last question. My last discussion. This is about this weather. These this this atmospheric flood that we have, this atmospheric river that is above our heads right now, that is dropping hundreds of metric feet of snow and rain all over the United States. And I want I want you guys to consider the weather, and then I want you to consider what's going on around you because I know that here in Nevada, 
where Lake Mead has been, we're, we're in crisis with Lake Mead. And ever since they announced that Lake Mead was literally, that we, we were losing Lake Mead, they have been building thousands of houses here in Las Vegas and in Henderson, all over Nevada. Thousands, apartment buildings, sing, uh, single unit dwellings, thousands of them on a, in an area that is supposedly not going to have water for very much longer. And then California is completely inundated with water. Look at the bigger picture, guys. All of this building, they are going to move people inland. Wherever you are, look around and look at how much new building they're doing. And then look at how much homelessness you have. And then ask yourself, why are they building all these houses? And we still have all these homeless people who don't have a place to live. But they're building on top of building on top of building. Pay attention, guys. Pay attention. They're about to start moving y'all folks off the coasts. They about to start moving y'all inland. The weather is going to get worse and worse and worse. There's going to be more and more um, coastal erosion. The earthquakes are getting stronger and stronger. Just be prepared. Be prepared. And don't think that, that these people don't have ulterior motives. What they are, I don't know right now. I don't know why they want to move everybody into the center of the United States. But guys, it's not for our good. No, you can best believe that it ain't for our good. This only serves to benefit those who have the most. Because they move us around like chess pieces. Or like little checkermen. You know, they just bounce us across the board. We are of no consequence to them. This is why we must keep our eye on them. If, if you want to know who you need to be watching, watch the 1%. Pay attention to what they are doing. Pay attention to where they're moving their money. And then you'll understand what they have in store for us. All right? Don't be scared. Ain't no reason to be scared. I love every single one of y'all. Keep your eyes open. Don't be scared. And don't give your energy to fear. If you can't fix it, there's no reason to worry about it. But what you need to understand is that you have a power. Human beings have a power. And this is what they are trying to suppress. They want to keep us separated because if we come together, we can overthrow them. Just with our thought. It doesn't take for us to pick up a weapon. We never had to. They put weapons in our hands to make us weaker. They put weapons in our hands to give us uh, the belief that we can't protect ourselves without steel and, and fire and bullets. They want us to forget that all we need is a single consciousness for us to think the same thought at the same time. And we could change all kinds of stuff. That's what they want to keep secret. That's what they want to keep secret. All right, guys. Happy Monday. Remember, every, every day is a brand new day. Yesterday is gone, ain't coming back. All the troubles that were yesterday, leave them in yesterday. Don't bring trouble into your future. Start every day off as a clean slate. You are in control. If you wake up and the first thing you do is give thanks, be grateful for one more chance to get it right, and then go out there and live your life. Be happy, dance, sing, do the things that make you feel complete. Don't be worrying. Don't be sad. Learn how to turn a loose of those things that don't serve you. And that means all those things that make you feel bad, let them go. And that means people too. It's okay to let things go that do not bring you happiness and joy. 
It's okay to walk away from people who make you feel bad. It's okay for you to love yourself enough to make sure that you have peace. All right. I love you. And the one thing I want for all of you is for you to love yourselves. Be gentle with yourself today. Be easy. Look in your mirror and tell yourself, I love you. And you are perfect just the way you were made. Universe don't create no junk. You are here because you are supposed to be here. I love you. Happy Monday. Namaste, guys. Bye-bye.